The Center for Neuroscience was established 30 years ago as the first interdisciplinary research center at UC Davis and one of the first neuroscience centers in the country. I thought we should invest in a new frontier that was becoming a frontier in the country and that we could be a part of from the beginning rather than having to play catch up. We uh, had almost no presence in neuro, what was then called neurobiology. And uh, so I believe that even though we were not invested in that at all, that we should be. And the question was how to go about that. I appointed a committee chaired by Leo Chalupa and Leo appointed Leo to put forth a plan for the future of neurobiology. We told the administration what, what is a truth. We said no university that takes itself seriously in contemporary biological research can be considered to be preeminent without uh, neuroscience. You know, that that was the, the most exciting thing in our judgment uh, that was going on then in um, all of biology and arguably all of science. We need a center for neuroscience, a building on campus, and we need to hire 10 faculty as soon as possible uh, in order to have preeminence in neuroscience. And to my delight, and I think the surprise of the people in the committee, uh, the, uh, the administration accepted it, and largely I give credit to Bob Gray about that. We uh, proceeded from there to uh, take the steps to development, develop a center. It's clear it couldn't be a department. It had to be a center, but it had to have some features that were not present in other campus centers. And the unique part was uh, and is still to this day in many places, that the faculty positions were under the control of the director, not of an individual department. <clears throat> that was the first principle. The second was, which was new, that and it, everybody recruited must have a position in an academic department. By specifying that the members of the center had to be in a department, it enriched departments all over the campus. The search committee looking for a director found Michael Gazaniga then at Dartmouth. And this is one of the great good fortunes of, <laughs> of that time. Dr. Gazaniga, he was, he was a cognitive neuroscientist and he brought with him many of his own faculty um, and along with the other schools like neurology volunteered about five or so. So essentially the first director agreed to take the job without a physical entity and he got two of the three buildings that now comprise the Center for Neuroscience. And he validated what I predicted would happen. Mike is a person who makes something out of nothing. In the original uh, hiring, I think there were 10 positions and two of them came from different schools. So the Ag School, the Vet School, the Arts and Science School, the Med School. And so when we hired people in, uh, one of, they were assigned to one of these divisions and yet they all had this common interest in neuroscience. And so we kind of made a concerted effort to go for uh, the young blooming professors that were coming uh, in, we know from great labs and, uh, and had a great, uh, shared a great view of, of where we should go. So that's what we did. And we hired a string of, uh, of 10 people, nine or 10 that were just terrific in every way. And, and uh, we were off to the races. What we're really looking for are bright people, uh, people with obvious, uh, rich in ideas, rich in energy, rich in, in desire uh, towards this common goal of understanding better mind and brain and perception and behavior and, and all the rest of it. Four years later, Mike said, 
I'm going back to Dartmouth, you know, he said, I did my job here, hired the people. And so then Bob Gray came to me and said, hey, look, you know, you got to be the next director. And I agreed to do it. So I became the second director. After about a year or, or a year and a half, I met again with Bob Gray and said, Bob, you know, this is great what's going on for neuroscience. We don't have a critical mass. We have to get phase two. So Leo Chalupa steps in. I call Leo the glue. Uh, because he he really patched everybody together and was a key component on uh, recruiting um, for the next director. And um, so Leo was around, I believe, for two years um, until uh, they <clears throat> found a, a willing candidate, uh, Edward Jones. Our third director of the Center for Neuroscience, Ted Jones, was a legend. Ted was incredibly accomplished in the field of neuroscience, especially in the field of neuroanatomy. He wrote some of the most influential books um, in neuroanatomy on the region of the brain called the thalamus. And he hired 15 faculty at the Center for Neuroscience. I was one of the first faculty members that Ted hired. Ted had a very broad uh, vision for neuroscience and it, and it encompassed everything that he had at the center from very basic cellular and molecular neuroscience, particularly in the areas of synaptic biology and plasticity and memory, um, all the way up to the systems group, which had grown, uh, was very strong in sensory systems, as well as uh, a cognitive and computational group. Tids contribution, his, his, his lasting legacy, I think, was just setting a bar at the center. Um, and the center, of course, has this reputation for uh, excellence in basic neuroscience. And uh, Ted, Ted, you know, brought that with his persona. So when Ted stepped down and I came as interim director and, and then as director, uh, I really wanted to build on what Ted had already done. Of course, you know, we wanted to hire the best in bringing new young faculty. Uh, we wanted to bring new methods and technologies to the, to the center. You know, this was a period of time during the 2010s when uh, neurotechnology was taking off. So these were people that were doing amazing physiology, working with amazing genetic models, using methods such as optogenetics, which were brand new and out of the box and very transformative for areas of both cellular and uh, systems neuroscience. Excellence and, and new, new blood and new methods, new technologies. So this last phase of the Center for Neuroscience over the past six years really took off from the fundamental establishment of basic neuroscience and allowed us to, to start to really solidify that bridge that uh, Dr. Carter had, had started to establish between basic neuroscience and translational neuroscience. The Obama Brain Initiative allowed us to start to expand in areas that have been very important to the future of, of neuroscience research. That includes the fields of computational neuroscience, a dramatic expansion of systems neuroscience and the field of neuroengineering. And, and all of the hires that, that I was able to do within the center so far and that we plan for the next five years have really capitalized on the expansion uh, into these fields of neuroscience. Although you typically hear a lot about the directors and the faculty at the Center for Neuroscience, it's really all of the people that work in our laboratories that make the Center for Neuroscience so special. We attract a group of incredibly smart, um, incredibly humble, incredibly curious and passionate uh, trainees, lab staff, and, and administrative staff that really are the heart of the center that push the neuroscience research forward, that come up with the innovative ideas for, for how to address a scientific question, for a new technique that allows a whole new area of neuroscience research to open up, for a new process that allows our labs to work better.
One of the unique strengths of the Center for Neuroscience is that it houses the graduate group in neuroscience. And this is where the graduate group has been from its inception. Uh, it has grown in parallel with the Center for Neuroscience. Uh, the graduate group itself, when, we, when I first arrived, had about 20 students and maybe about 40 faculty. And, and now we've more than tripled the number of faculty in the, in the graduate group. And this is all because people want to be a part of things. They want to be part of the broader community. And again, the Center for Neuroscience has been at the heart of this expansion. The Center for Neuroscience has, I think, led the way in thinking about DEI. We bring the outside community into our buildings and we let them see what it is that we do. We make presentations, we make them fun. Uh, we have booths where the, where the kids can come and, and, and do neuroscience games and hold brains. And for a lot of people, they've never held a brain before. They've never touched a brain. And, and that experience can be really almost life-changing in, in many respects. Since we were established, there have been a number of additional centers that have spun off of the Center for Neuroscience, often by faculty that came originally from the Center for Neuroscience. The first was the Mind Institute that was established in the School of Medicine. Then we had the Center for Mind and Brain that was established in the College of Letters and Sciences. And most recently, the Center for Neuroengineering and Medicine has been established in the College of Engineering. Five centers related to neuroscience all came out because of the success of the Center for Neuroscience. If you're an administrator, you know, you want to build success on, this, on top of success. So, so now, uh, you know, Dave's is the powerhouse in, the, in neuroscience across all uh, colleges, uh, across all entities. One of the most exciting developments in neuroscience at UC Davis over the last couple of years has been the establishment of the UC Davis Neuroscience Consortium. This consortium brings together all of the major centers in neuroscience at UC Davis, along with a lot of the faculty that are found in, in different departments across all of our colleges and schools. We have more than 300 faculty members that all run labs that are addressing some aspect of neuroscience research. This is one of the strongest groups of neuroscientists anywhere in the world. With the formation of the consortium, we're bringing these faculty together to, to start to tackle some of the grandest challenges that our society faces as we move forward into the next 10, 20, 30 years. The thrilling beauty of it all is that it um, served to strengthen the neurosciences broadly cast throughout the entire Davis campus. So that at the start, we were not on anybody's map at all. And now we're on lots of maps. And um, I, I think, um, that's pretty much the story.